Now, I'm just going to go over quickly uh, some of the things that uh, Pastor went over last Sunday by way of review. And uh, I see at least a couple of people that are here today that was not uh, here last Sunday. And um, so I'm going to put a couple of things. I wasn't going to put it on there, but um, since a couple of you are here that wasn't here last week, uh, we talk about the contents, the contents of John's gospel. Okay, we're going to talk about the contents of John's gospel is one John emphasizes John emphasizes the love of God. Two John emphasizes the fatherhood of God, the fatherhood of God. And three, John emphasizes the children of God. And, um, <coughs> and John, oh, thank you, D. Okay, and <coughs> The first one that John, okay, John emphasizes uh, the love of God. John emphasizes uh, the fatherhood of God, and he emphasizes the children of God. So those are the contents of uh, John. Th th those are the contents of John's gospel. <clears throat> and so by way of review, <clears throat> we have Matthew. This is by way of review from a pastor from last week. So a lot of you may already have it in your notes. But we talk about Matthew. Oh, nice. Wow. What a difference. Uh, Matthew is uh, the monarchy of Jesus, the monarchy. A-R-C-H. The monarchy of Jesus. And that is, he is king. He is king. Oh boy, that ain't coming off. Might have to put some wet stuff on that. Uh, then you have Mark. Mark. <coughs> this is Matthew, the modern archae of Jesus. Um, Mark is the ministry of Jesus. The ministry of Jesus. Uh, the ministry of Jesus, he is servant. Okay ministry of Jesus is that he is servant. <clears throat> and 
in Luke Luke is the manhood of Jesus the manhood of Jesus <clears throat> And that is Jesus becoming a man. I mean, I'm sorry, God becoming a man. <clears throat> Luke is the manhood of Jesus. And it, <clears throat> excuse me, and it is God becoming a man. Okay, God becoming a man. Now these are Matthew, Mark, Luke, and we, we have uh, John. We have the four gospel writers, <coughs> and even though, um, okay, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and the last one is John. John is the majesty of Jesus. The majesty of of Jesus. Okay. Now, what John unfolds for us is that in this human frame, the everlasting God resides. He lived inside of Jesus. He is great. Jesus is great because he is king, and he is humble because he is servant. So he is, um, he is king, and he is servant. He is man, and he is God. And I would like to say he was 100% man and 100% God. He wasn't like 50% man and 50% God. He wasn't like God-like. He is he is and he was God. And the book, uh, the Gospel of John, written by the Apostle John, and um, which uh, a little bit of the background of the Apostle John, he was uh, the son of Zebedee and the brother of James, fisherman of the family business, and he is a partner of Peter. He is called by Jesus. This is John we're talking about, the Apostle John, not John the Baptist, or John the, uh, some people call him John the Baptist, some call him John the Baptizer. This is not John, this is John the Apostle. He's a fisherman of the family business. He is a partner of Peter. <clears throat> he is called by Jesus, and he, he's called by Jesus he was one of the three uh, men who was in Jesus' inner circle along with Peter and James. John wanted to be closer to Jesus and became closer by virtue of his own interests. Uh, the opportunities Jesus offers us, they are invitations for us to get closer. I, must, I can say now that every one of us, we are as close to the Lord as we want to get. He doesn't push himself on people. He's a gentleman. He said, I stand at the door and knock. He don't, he don't gang rush it. He don't rush right in. He stand there and he said, I stand at the door and knock. And anyone here, you know, you open it, I'll come in and sup with you. And so we all, you know, sometimes we can look at people 
and, and, and they appear to be very Christ-like, gathered together, very spiritual, very spiritual-minded. Say, I wish I can be like that, or how come I can't? The opportunity is there for all of us. Whosoever will, let him come. And so the opportunity, and so, but if we do not uh, get closer to the Lord through Bible study and prayer, and then, it's, it's, uh, then it is on us. It's not on God. God is, is very relevant. And uh, he said, if you would draw nigh to me, I would draw nigh to you. And so that is uh, up, up to us. And so <laughs> John was the disciple, as he called himself, that Jesus loved. Can we, can we say that about ourselves? Sometimes when things happen to us, we wonder, Lord, do you really love me? Well, why, why did this happen? Or why did you allow this to happen? And uh, <clears throat> a lot of times we don't really, we sing the song sometimes. That's why I like that song, Yes, Jesus Loves Me, for the Bible tells me so. And uh, I like that song. And because um, a lot of times we, even as children of God, we don't feel loved by God sometimes. We really don't. So the invitation is there for us to get closer. Also, <clears throat> John is a witness for Jesus. He witnessed Jesus' death firsthand. Jesus <clears throat> entrusted John with the care of his mother. He's one of the first witness of his resurrection. As we know, the women were the first ones to, uh, to witness Jesus' resurrection, so the, so the women were the first evangelists. Amen. Uh, John, <coughs> John, uh, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> John outruns Peter to the grave, and he wasn't the, uh, one of the, the disciples because a lot of them, they were... They were hiding and they were running, especially after Jesus was crucified. But um, John and Peter, they was running there to the grave after the women came back and told them the good news. Now, um, the, uh, the apostle uh, only means, the apostle means who, he who has been, or he or she, anyone who has been sent by, apostle means who, one who has been sent by God. Apostle, because, you know, today, you know, a lot of people, I've seen it anyway, especially in the, the newspaper that we get. What is the Christian newspaper that we get here? The, uh, the Love Express. Yeah, I've seen preachers, I guess, ministers, and they call themselves apostle this and apostle that. And, and then, you know, some people say, oh, well, that was in biblical time, and, and you know, they don't know if they are biblically, biblical correct to say that they are Apostle John or Apostle, uh, uh, you know, whoever they are. But Apostle only means one who has been sent by God. Okay? And John, so he was an apostle, and he wrote the book of Acts, and he is the last of the disciples to die. At the end of the first century, which is 70 AD, uh, which was the year of the destruction of the fall of the temple and city of Jerusalem. So that's when he uh, was writing it. So at that time, most of the New Testament leaders have died. Paul, Peter, James and Judah have died. All of the letters of the New Testament, with the exception of John's letters, have been written. Uh, 80 to 90 AD, John is sentenced to the Isles of Patmos. <coughs> uh, <coughs> last Sunday, uh, Pastor said if anyone was interested in uh, researching more on John's life, he gave us uh, the book uh, called The Book of Martyrs, and it's by Fox, I guess F-O-X. I just have in my notes Fox, The Book of Martyrs. And so if you want to um, 
find out more about it. And in Fox's book, A Martyr, <coughs> the emperor tried to kill John, but he did not die. And they put him in like boiling water to kill him, but he did not die, he just floated. So, <laughs> so by the time, uh-huh, yeah, look at Jesus, right? <laughs> And so, uh, so by the time he is on uh, the Isle of Patmos, he had written the Gospel of John, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, and Revelation. And John dies peacefully. So why John does not, uh, well, the reason why, uh, if you look at the Synoptic Gospel, which is Matthew, Mark, and Luke, they have similar, the same things, and, you know, we went over that, that how three people witness the same thing and everybody's telling their own um, way, their own perspective of what happened. So, uh, but John doesn't do that. It's a lot of things that um, uh, John has a different uh, storyline. And one of them, uh, the contents of John, what I had on the board earlier, is that the contents, because he had a different storyline. And one of the things, it was the first miracle, was, was at the Canaan wedding. And then uh, the contents of John's is that John emphasizes the love of God. He emphasizes God's love. Remember I just said a lot of time we don't feel that God loves us? Like John 3.16. I bet you a lot, if you ask, um, if we just do a poll of our community and what have you, I bet you even the unchurched people who probably never even been in church or only except for funerals and weddings, I bet you they even know John 3.16. For God so loved the world. So loved, that's how much his love is. So John emphasizes the love of God. For God so loved the world. No other gospel take up this Thing as strongly as John. John takes up love. He emphasizes this love. He was known as the apostle of love. Paul was the apostle of faith. That's the uh, Paul whole thing. He was known as the apostle of faith. Peter was the apostle of hope. But John was the apostle of love. That's what he was known for. That's the first one. The second is John emphasizes the fatherhood of God. John emphasizes the fatherhood of God. So he not only emphasizes the love of God, he also emphasizes the fatherhood of God. God is not only the father of Jesus Christ, but he's the father of everyone who believes. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. And that's the way it was, I, I think, last Sunday when uh, uh, I think someone had asked, because they say he's the father of everyone who believes, and I think someone had said something about a question of Jesus being our elder brother and what have you. And so, you know, contextually, if... Um, that doesn't, say, that doesn't say that Jesus is not God if, if, say, he's our elder brother because God is his father, but he's still God. And so John's um, gospel alone, there is 134 references to father, and only 12 of them are not referring to God. And John pushes issues that God is the father of not only Jesus, but to everyone who believes. The same love that God has for his son Jesus is the same love he gives to us, the exact same love as he make no distinction. Isn't that a mind boggler? The same love that he has for his son Jesus is the same love that he has for us. And if we can just get a hold of that and believe it, because that's the whole key is believe. You have to believe. And, and I know that our life will be 
totally transformed, totally. And uh, uh, the third one is John emphasizes the children of God. <clears throat> that is that we are called the sons of God. Well, the sons and daughters of God. Um, and so we want to go, even though it's a well-known scripture, and as I had stated earlier, just about everybody know it, even the unchurched. Let's just go to John 3.16, and I want us all in unison to say it, and I'm going to get the other Bible because I have a different, I have the New King James Version, and it might be a little different, so I'm going to have the church Bible. John 3.16. Come on, we can go. And you know what? When we say it, just don't repeat it. Please say it with feeling. Take your time. We're going to take our time. We're just going to do John 3.16 slowly. And we're going to take our time and just imagine God's love empowering us, taking over. And I just don't want, because a lot of time we can say words and, and, and we lose the impact of the words because we don't think about it. We just recite them. So it, we don't want to be a recitation. We want to actually say, and um, as the psalmist said, open our eyes that we will see marvelous things from your law. The entrance of your word gives light, and it gives understanding to the simple. Let's just look at John 3, 16. Unison together, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen, amen. For God so loved the world that he gave, that's the first thing he gave, he gave his only begotten son, Jesus, <laughs> that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen, amen. And um, let's just go to John 1 and 12. We're still in the book of John. John 1 and 12. Let me get my other Bible back. Okay. John 1 and 12 say, But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God to those who believe in his name. Is, does the regular King James, is that different from what I just read? Okay, will someone just read the King James Version? The reason why I went back to the new King James Version because I wanted to know what this said, but because we were in unison on John 3.16, I had to use the church Bible. Could someone please uh, read uh, 112? Amen, amen. Okay. And um, also, uh, we were born by the will of God. And he, uh, Pastor was saying last Sunday, uh, do not put born of God, but, he, but we were born by the will of God. And we talk about the eternal relationship and that Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is the uniquely placed Son of God, and nobody can ever take his place. And as we said, the John uh, 3.16. No birth is connected to the only begotten. He's the only begotten of the Father. And we talk about that there's no birth that is connected with the only begotten. That is the only one of its kind. That's what begotten means, the only one of its kind. Uniquely set apart absolutely different and distinct from everyone, only one of his kind, Jesus. That's why I say, so he gave his only 
begotten son. Jesus was God's only begotten. We are sons of God, but we are not his only begotten. We weren't begotten because uh, Pastor last Sunday used as an example, if you go in Matthew, so-and-so and begot, so-and-so and begot, so-and-so and right on down the line. And so with Jesus, he's the only begotten of God. And so that's where that whole thing came in with the elder brother. And those of you guys who was here last Sunday, you, you know, you, you remember, I'm sure. And um, so John emphasizes a family metaphor into the presentation. John says that the church is a body, but it's also a family. And family has a father, usually, with children. And, well, and... Uh, and a big brother is Jesus. And so uh, we look at John, first, second, the first, second, and third John. Uh, it's the forming of the Father, the fellowship with the family, <clears throat> and the future of the family. Uh, transformation is to be adopted. We have uh, we are in the new birth because we were adopted. That whole thing in Ephesians would tell you about the adoption. That, that was the review from last Sunday. If you guys that came in after I had spoken, I was taking you through uh, last Sunday's review. Now, for today. Okay, we're running right on schedule. Okay. In Matthew and Luke, son of da in in Matthew and Luke, Matthew, son of G we we uh, we're still in the book of John, and we're still talking about Jesus. So in um, in Matthew and Luke, son of David and son of man, they link Christ to the earth. When Matthew says son of David, Luke says son of man. They're talking about Jesus as, as being man, and so they're linking Christ to the earth. In John, he talks about the Son of God, which connects Christ with the Father in heaven. Luke takes care to guard our Lord's divine perfection in his humanity. John takes care to guard Jesus' divine perfection in his deity. In these days, a widespread departure from the truth, the deity of Jesus Christ must be emphasized. And that is exactly what John is doing to emphasize the deity of Jesus Christ. In John, Jesus is shown dwelling with God before any creation was formed. Look at John 1 in the first two verses of John 1, 1 and 2. In John 1, 1 and 2, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. Now, let's just look at Genesis <laughs> chapter 1, verse 1. Okay? Genesis 1 and 1 says, In the beginning, God. Okay, in the beginning, God, he created the heavens and the earth. So Jesus was there from the beginning. He has no beginning because he was always there. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. Look at what it says. The word was with God, and the word was God. God. Right at the beginning of his gospel, John tells us that Jesus was far more than just a great teacher or a mighty prophet. In fact, he was God. Jesus is the express image of God's person. Look at Hebrew 1 and 3. Hebrew 1 and 3 says, 
talking about Jesus, it's they look at two uh, uh, saying that, uh, look, let's, let's just go one, two, and three. God who at various times and in various ways, this is Hebrews chapter one, first three verses. God who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the world, who, being the brightness of his glory and the express image, talking about Jesus, of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. When we hear Jesus, we hear God, because Jesus is God. When we observe Jesus, we observe God. If we ever want to know what God is like, or how he might act, or where he might go, all we have to do is watch Jesus, because Jesus is God. Now, in the Gospel of John, John calls seven witnesses. He calls seven witnesses. One second. John brings seven witnesses to stand to prove that Jesus Christ was God. So right now, I want you all to sit back and relax. Take your minds back to the biblical time and just imagine as you hear these seven witnesses, just as imagine as they make these statements. I would ask these witnesses what they say about Jesus. What do you say, John the Baptist? I, John, myself have seen and have testified this is the Son of God. John 1, 22. Thank you, John the Baptist. What is your conclusion, Nathaniel? Nathaniel, what is your conclusion? That thou art the Son of God. John, John 1, John 1, 49, John 1, 49, 49. okay. Thank you, Nathaniel. Now, uh, the third witness, who's the third witness? Wait, wait one second, third witness. Okay, one second. I, I'm just saying, I'm calling your name, but I haven't okay. said anything yet, uh, third witness. Now, the, when, when I call the witnesses, I would like for the witnesses to stand first. So that's why I'm saying third witness. So when you, I say third witness, stand. Thank you. Now, what do you know, Peter? And we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And that's uh, John 6, verse 69. The fourth witness, thank you, John. I mean, thank you, Peter. Thank you, Peter. Fourth witness. Now, what do you think, Martha? I said, she said unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. John eleven twenty seven. Thank you, Martha. The fifth witness. Antony. Wait, 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 wait. I didn't call you. I said fifth witness. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't actually say, I haven't asked you a question yet. What is your verdict, Thomas? And Thomas answered and said unto him, The Lord of the come not to the world. Now, give me the reference. Amen. Amen. Sixth witness.
What is your statement, John? My statement is, it is written that we might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that in believing this, you might have it through his name. Amen. Where's the yes. reference? The reference? The reference The reference is John 20, 31. Amen. Amen. The seventh witness, what do you say of yourself? Sorry. What do you say of yourself, Christ? Christ? Yes. Whom the Father hath sanctified and sent into the world, thou blasphemest, because I said, I am the Son of God? I am the Son of God. John t um, John 10 verse 36. Amen. Thank you. Now we had a little exercise here which I wanted to um, you, can you turn it off? Would you turn it off? Thank you. Thank each and every one of my witnesses. What happened, the first seven one that came to the Sunday school, they, they became the witnesses. The first seven people. So that's how I determined my witnesses because they were here. And um, I just would like to go over, because it's, if some of you, because you got caught up in, in, in audience participation, that you didn't take down these references, but it says that um, these are seven witnesses that John said to prove that Jesus Christ was God. And the first one was John the Baptist, which was John 1.34. The second one, uh, John 1.49, which was Nathaniel. John 6, 69, Peter. Uh, John eleven twenty seven, 27, which is Martha. Uh, John 20, 28, which is Thomas. And John 20, 31, which was John. And um, John 10, 36, which was Christ. I am the Son of God. Also, looking at um, the book of John, there were seven miracles. So between the seven witnesses that John calls on, he describes seven signs or miracles that prove Jesus was God. But no man can do these miracles that thou, that thou doest except God be with him. This is what Nicodemus uh, was saying, which is John 3 and 2. He saw Jesus, and he said, <clears throat> he said, no man can do these miracles except that God be with him. So as I stated, the first miracle was turning water into wine, which was John 2, first 11 verses. Uh, the second one is healing the nobleman's son. As I give you references, because we're going to go right through these, because it's after 10, and so I, don't, I wanted to give you the seven um, Miracles, it was um, healing the nobleman's son, which is John 4, verses 46 to uh, 54. And the third one, I'm just giving you seven miracles. Uh, you know, he had so many miracles. If they did, he had, you know, the Bible couldn't contain them all. But um, three is healing the man at Bethesda, uh, John 5. 1 through 47. Uh, 4 is feeding the 5,000. And John 6, 1 through uh, 14. And um, if I'm going too fast, uh, slow me down because I'm trying to, uh, trying to hurry up now because it's almost close to the end. What was I on? Uh, did I do? Okay, 4. Huh? Wait a minute, somebody heard four, five, and six. Oh, okay, thank you. Which was John 6, 1 through 14. Five is walking on water, which was uh, John 6, 15 through 21. And the other one is healing the blind man, which is John 9, 
1 through 41, and the other one was the last one of the seven miracles is raising Lazarus, John 11, 1 through 57. So now we <clears throat> you have raising Lazarus, John 1, 11, 11, 1 through 57. Now we have seven I am's. Okay, there is yet another proof of Jesus' deity. Jesus reveals his God nature in the I am of the, of, of the book of John. The first one is I am the bread of life. The bread of life, and that is John uh, 6.35, John 6.35. The second I am is I am, I am the light of the world, of the world, and that's John 8.12. John 8, 12. The third I am, <laughs> he said, before Abraham was, before Abraham, before Abraham was, <laughs> he said, I am. And that's John 8, 58. That's John 8, 58. The fourth one is, I am the good shepherd. I am the good shepherd. Which is John 10, 11. Okay, I don't know if you guys can see this, but I can read them to you. Uh, the fifth one is, I am the resurrection and the life. I am the resurrection and the life. That's John eleven twenty five. John eleven twenty five and six <laughs> said I am the way I am the way the truth the truth T R U T H all right I am the way the truth and the life. And that's John 14, 6. John 14, 6. And 7 says, I am the true vine. I am the true vine, and that's uh, John 15 and 1. Okay? John 15 and 1. And the last thing is that John is the only one that records the triumphant shout. It is finished, which is John 19 and 30. John 19 and 30 says it is finished. Amen. The finished work of salvation is accomplished only by the Son of God. 
the finished work of salvation. That's why he said it is finished. Because it is accomplished only by the Son of God. Amen? All righty. Is there any questions? All right. Thank you.